After four years of uh, Modi rule, India's digital economy is a bit disheartened. Two of my uh, recent articles and videos uh, went viral and uh, touched a raw nerve with readers and policymakers. In the first one, uh, I coined a catchy acronym, DECOIT, D-A-C-O-I-T, that's uh, Digital America and China colonizing uh, and obliterating uh, Indian tech. I just used the uh, hard-hitting uh, acronym style patented by uh, Prime Minister Modi himself. A few weeks later, when uh, Walmart acquired Flipkart, it vindicated my decoity assertion. I then published a second uh, uh, piece and video. Huge salute to the entrepreneurial spirit of the Bunsel boys, that's Sachin and Bini, and their team of flipsters for miraculously uh, succeeding against a hostile government which handcuffed and threw them uh, to the wolves of competition. Here's what a highly uh, acclaimed uh, first-generation founder of a digital startup, and yeah, that's not Flipkart, I must uh, hasten to add, uh, uh, see, see what he told me. Uh, here's the first-generation founder. Loved the Decoity article and video. Have been saying similar stuff, but this government is not a good listener. It's really tough. Irony is that they keep saying that they want a Google and an Alibaba to come out of India. I've said this to the face of everyone, including the PM. Politely, of course. But they don't get it, because the obsession is FDI in the short term. Now, for obvious reasons, I shall not disclose the identity of this bright young man. Uh, and here is my WhatsApp exchange with a digitally savvy IAS officer. Now, this is recorded uh, at about 7 a.m. Uh, one fine morning. I read your very nice piece, agree with large parts of it, not all. No party can alienate the traders with 12 million establishments. Thus, it will also be salami tactics, slow poison, not a direct confrontation. By the way, this PMO has been seized of the issues you mentioned and has been working on it, albeit slowly. You should see positive changes soon. The policymakers should stop micromanaging, trying to control winners and losers. Their job should be to ensure fair competition, not become the arbiters of who can do what under which rules. But unlike you, my friend, other IAS officers are deeply suspicious of freedoms. And politicians, of course, uh, couldn't care less. That uh, is the core problem. I agree with you. Problem is, in many cases, not all, they are unable to ensure fair competition either. Then leave it to the brutality of markets. That's far better than creating these rent seekers. Give me three months. Unfortunately, Prime Minister Modi is again making the fatal error uh, that has dogged four years uh, of his reign. He is trusting the Indian Administrative Service, IAS, uh, to deliver a modern, market-friendly policy architecture. Now, before the uh, formidable IAS lobby swats me down, let me say that I am an IAS kid. My father belonged to the 1957 batch, Rajasthan Kada. Now, IAS officers are easily the brightest, most intelligent talent that this country has to offer. No quarrel with that at all. But you know, their um, cradle-to-grave security ring fences them from volatile success and failure. Uh, their uh, monetary rewards are completely unhinged from merit or achievement. Now, uh, whether you are a fast tracker or a laggard, you move in the same slow lane. Now, this stalemate nurtures a very deep suspicion about free markets. Hence, the IAS has this urge to micromanage uh, and create provisos. Now, this is how a typical uh, uh, conversation will go. Uh, Mr. Statistically Suspicious uh, IAS officer will stipulate uh, that no single shareholder shall invest more than 10% in the equity capital. Now, we'll jump in Mr. Uh, Structurally Suspicious IAS officer who will say, uh, since those large corporations can create layers of ownership behind a corporate veil, uh, we should add directly or indirectly in the definition of a single shareholder. Now jumps in Mr. Small Fetish uh, IAS officer who will say, uh, since startup founders have become dollar billionaires after their exit, we should add a second proviso that these benefits will be available only to the first venture of a first generation entrepreneur. Now, sir, tell me, how do you figure that out? And here's a uh, final Mr. Nail in the Coffin IAS officer. Sir, we must distinguish between startups which add to the tech innovation ecosphere as opposed to somebody uh, just setting up a, uh, a pakora, you know, a fried potato shop. So, sir, these concessions uh, should be made available only to those startups which are duly certified by the inter-ministerial board set up under DIPP to identify innovative business operations. 
there, there, there you go again. Even before it's, it's been written, this uh, policy has already been made uh, unimplementable.